In our video today, we're going to take a look at Fusion 360. In particular, we're going to take a look at some of the best practices for Fusion 360, as well as just some shortcuts and efficiency techniques. Let's go ahead and get started. First thing I'd like to take on is just the general workflow of Fusion. The very first thing we should do after starting a new file or a new design is go up here and save. So I'll say this is going to be our test document. And after I name it, I want to go ahead and save it in the correct location. And that's going to be up to me. I'll hit save. Now, because I've already saved the document, what this will help happen is, is if we get a power outage or something like that, we have a much stronger likelihood that Fusion is going to begin that auto saving process for us and actually have a recovery file for us when we come back in. The next thing we'll do is we'll actually start with a new component. So we'll go up here and click the component icon. And for right now, I think I'll just leave it as component one, but I could rename it there if I wanted to. I'll go ahead and click OK. Now I'll go ahead and start a new sketch. I'll pick the plane I want to work with. And then I'll just draw my component. So I'm just going to keep it kind of simple. We'll just make a little two inch cube here just so you can see how things are flowing. And I'll press OK. Next step, before I hit new component again, I want to go up here to test document up here at the top of my browser bar. And I'm going to click the radio button. I want to be in the top level menu because I'm going to start another new component. And for those of us that are new to Fusion, we often forget to do that. So I'll go ahead and click component two and I'll start sketch. Let's just keep this one simple. We'll just make a simple circle. And we'll extrude that. So now you can see I've got two components on the screen. If I'd like to get them back, I'll go up to the top of that top level menu again. And I'll press the radio button. And you'll notice that they're back. Now if you look down here at the timeline, you can see I've got history for every part. If I want to get these parts colored for me, if I press shift and in, you can see how it colors the components. You'll notice over here in the browser that we have pink and it matches the pink as well as purple and it matches the purple. If we look down at the timeline we can see the exact same thing. The colors will match the components. To get out of that mode press shift and in again and that will turn it on and off. Another thing we could do is we could actually press A and that will pull up the appearances for us. So appearance maybe I need this to be painted yeah, I want to paint the cube, so I'll expand paint, I'll expand glossy, and I'll just grab, grab a green and drag it over. So A is a shortcut for appearance. Here's something else that can help. We can actually just press H, and that pulls up the hole command. Then I pick the side, and from there, I can execute the hole. I can also go back into sketch mode. Some of those common ones are L for line. The line tool comes up and we press L. Now, I drew that extra long on purpose because I wanted to show you another shortcut. For those of us out there in Inventor World, we're used to these scissors and we used to press the X key and it would trim for us. Now, if we press the T key on our keyboard, it activates trim and that allows us to get rid of some extra lines if we need to. We could also take and use our measuring tool up here. If we press I, I is a shortcut to pull up the measuring tool. And now I can see that this line is two inches. I could also click it or I could press I and, and choose between points as well to get measurements. While we go, let's, let's go back into our features mode here. If I press F, F will pull up fill it for me. And then I can fill it edges if I, if I wanted to. Let's take a visit back into sketch mode here. I'm going to take I'm going to take and draw a box right here. And I'm going to do an offset. So there's the offset command, but I can also press O and O will do the offset. It's a shortcut to offset any kind of shape we have. And as we know, if we press D, D will pull up that dimension command. 
and will allow me to dimension lines. Occasionally in our features mode, we realize we didn't make something maybe thick enough. So here's our push, or excuse me, here's our press pull, but we can also press Q and Q will pull up press pull. Maybe I need to make this side just a little bit longer. So Q will pull that up. Let's talk about one that I feel is extremely important to know. I like to rotate and orbit quite a bit when I'm drawing and creating in Fusion. I can press Shift on my keyboard and I can press the wheel on my mouse and that will allow me to rotate. So all I did was I held down the Shift key on my keyboard and I'm pressing the wheel on my mouse. Speaking of the wheel on your mouse, if I let go of the Shift key and just press and hold the wheel, what that allows me to do is pan the object. So just clicking the wheel is a shortcut to pan. Now for those of you out there that have tried and you're like, my, I can't rotate with the Shift and the mouse button. You may have to go up to your account icon and say preferences. When you get there into your general settings, you will have to go down here and you'll have to say for pan, zoom, and orbit shortcuts, you want to make sure that says Fusion 360. There are other options there. Fusion 360 and then you can use the shift and you can click the uh, wheel on your mouse and hold it and you'll get that. While we're in here, let's talk about a general setting I like to change to. For the default modeling orientation, most of the time by default it is set to be Z up. I prefer to use Y up because what that does is allows me to enter drawing mode and my front view is actually going to show up on the XY plane. The other thing I can do, another unit I like to change is I like to go down here to default units and go to design. And when I do, this actually helps me set the unit like the default unit by default it is in metric it's millimeters i tend to use inches so i like to change that to inches let's talk about basic sketching perhaps here i'm going to go to a go to that top level menu and i'm going to say a new component i'll call this component three and i'll click new sketch and let's just start out here let's play like i need to use the center rectangle. I use the center rectangle a lot. So I'm going to go to create. I'm going to go to rectangle and there's center rectangle. I don't know if you noticed this, but I've actually got a shortcut set up for that. So if I press shift and Z, it'll pull up that command. Similar to how we did with the line command. You know, when we do a line and we press L, it'll pull up the line command. Just like with dimensioning, we press D and it pulls up dimension. I'm going to set this center rectangle up. Instead of Shift Z, I'm going to click these three dots and I'm going to say Change Keyboard Shortcut. And when I do this, it's going to pop up. And you know what? I'm just going to change that to a Z. Now, there will be times where these commands are already used. So I'm going to change it to Z and I'll press OK. So now when I zoom out and I press the Z key on my keyboard, you can see it pulls up that center rectangle for me. Those can come in really handy. Now we also all use CAD just a little bit different. Maybe I want those icons to be up here because I use them frequently. So I'll say, let's go to create. And I want to use rectangle. And there's that center point rectangle. If I click the three dots, I'm just going to say, let's pin that pin to the toolbar. And now it's up there for me. So if I'm in the habit of clicking that, I can just use it real quick. So you can really customize your toolbar ribbon up at the top, make things really nice.